Hello, my name is Mike Panuski, Project Manager for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Buffalo District. This map represents a typical stream or river profile. The blue is where the water naturally flows. The green area represents the natural floodway. This is the area that floods often during high water events. This area has been carved out over time to accommodate high flows of water. Flooding in this area has a 2-10% to chance of occurring each year. Most people understand this percentage expressed in years. In this case, a 10-50 to 50 year flood. The orange area is the flood plain. It is a very large area that receives flooding a lot less frequently. These areas have a 1-2% to 2 chance of flooding each year, or a 100 year flood as expressed in years. I would like to talk to you about lowering flood risk through the use of diversion channels. Flooding occurs when more water is flowing through the channel than it can accommodate. It is possible to reduce some or all of the risk of flood damage by diverting some of that water out of the natural channel, around the area where we wish to reduce flood risk, and back to the natural channel in another location. To divert the water, a diversion structure is built in the stream bed. Usually this is some kind of dam or flood wall which will allow some flow to remain in the natural stream and diverts the rest of the flow to a diversion channel. This diversion channel can be natural or man-made and will function to help move water to another location, presumably away from the area where we are trying to manage the flood risk. In this diagram, you can see how a diversion would work. Here you have water flowing downstream in a town that is in the floodplain. Upstream of the town, we would put in a diversion structure and construct a diversion channel for an alternate route for the water to flow. The alternate route will take the water around the town, reducing the risk of property and structure damage from flooding. Constructing a diversion channel and moving the water around the town may not reduce the flow enough to reduce flood damage risk downstream of the outlet. In this case, we could construct some type of retention structure. Retention structures, such as retention ponds, can be constructed along the diversion channel or upstream from the diversion channel. At a later time, water from the retention structure would be released when the flood water recedes and there is adequate capacity in the natural channel or the diversion channel to receive this additional water. That ends the discussion on diversion channels. Thank you.